Hello everyone and welcome back to the Yellow Dog 3D Tips blog. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can make an effect just like this one. Um, and we're going to be using real flow inside of Cinema 4D. And this effect is actually really simple. It's just using a D-spline daemon in real flow. And all you're really doing is just telling um, the simulation where to go using a spline. So here's our scene um, inside of Cinema. Um, and what I'm going to do is just hide all of the lighting and the studio and everything like that and we'll just focus on the bottle for now. So first things first, let's create an emitter. So go to real flow emitters and create a circle emitter. And if you just go to frame one and hit play, you'll see you get a fluid simulation really, really quickly. It actually feels like it simulates faster than the standalone real flow. So what I'm going to do is just move this circle emitter to the position I want the simulation to start in. So I'm thinking this top right corner is a good place. Um, we want somewhere that's um, off camera if possible. Um, so I'm just going to angle the emitter towards the uh, sort of far side of the bottle. So it passes the bottle and it's going to do a loop around the bottle and then off to the left of the screen. So if I just hit play now we can look at the trajectory of that. And that looks pretty good to me, um, that's definitely going to work. So what I'm going to do now is put something called a kill volume um, where the simulation is going to end up. To do that we just go to real flow, daemons and k volume and you'll get this little box um, sort of in your viewport. And what this is, is basically any particles which enter this box um, will be killed and won't be simulated any further. So I'm just going to make this quite large so that the we don't have to be too accurate with um, where the particles end up. So just making sure that that's off camera so that the particles can flow right out of view. And very importantly, the next step, we need to go into this K volume and click inverse. And that's just basically saying stop the simulation of particles which go inside of the K volume instead of ones that are on the outside. So the next thing we need to do is create a spline. So I'm just going to select the pen tool, go to the top view, and I'm just going to draw a spline that loop-de-loops around the beer bottle. Um, so you don't have to be too accurate, it's not going to follow this line exactly, it's just basically a rough guide of where the particles are going to go. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that now. And now I'm just going into the perspective view and I've gone into vertex mode and I'm just going to move these spline points up to a better position, you don't want them just going flat around the floor. So yeah, I'm just doing this very roughly, um, I'm not following any kind of rule, <laughs> I'm just putting them wherever looks good. Um, so just this last point. And that looks pretty good to me. Hopefully the fluid simulation should flow all the way around this spline, loop-de-loop -loop the bottle and go into the K volume. That's the idea. So next we need to go into real flow, daemons and create our D-spline. And in our D-spline spline object we just drag our spline into that. And you'll see it's created these circles around the spline. And a good way to think of these is as thrusters or accelerators. So they're basically going to grab the fluid simulation and accelerate them into a different direction and you can select these points around the edges and move the radius of them and this can also be further controlled in the left hand menu um, it's quite easy to do it in the viewport though I feel like it's um, a bit quicker to do it that way so I've just made them all a little bit bigger um, I'm gonna get them all roughly the same size so something to bear in mind is their position along the spline is really important in areas where there's a sharp corner you might encounter a problem where the simulation falls off the path. So if we click these little next and previous um, arrows, we can toggle through the uh, selection. And if we click the little add um, icon, we can add extra despline objects along the spline just to make sure that the simulation doesn't go off track. I think we have enough points in there now. Um, I'll just make this last one just um, the same size as the rest. So now we can just hit play and hopefully this simulation will follow the despline. So you have to be quite patient with this, like simulation can sometimes take a long time. And that appears to be working to me. So what we can do now is configure the settings of the D-spline. So um, first off is a vortex strength, and this is how much spin each D-spline object is going to give to the simulation. Axial strength is how much thrust um, each D-spline gives it. And radial strength is how much uh, the simulation gets sucked into the center of the D-spline object. So for vortex strength, I'm just going to keep that quite low at 0 0.3. Um, I'm going to keep axial strength um, at 1, and I'll put radial strength to 200, and you'll see how that's starting to affect it. We wanted a nice fast um, simulation, and that's what we're getting with the high radial strength value. So we started to get some of the behavior that we wanted, but um, I feel like the emitter is way too small. I wanted a much thicker stream, so I'm just going to select the emitter, and you can just simply scale it. And, and that's just going to emit more particles at once, so you've got to be a bit careful with this, but... There it is, that should work very nicely. So as you can see there's much more particles now, um, but you'll also get a slower simulation time. 
I'm actually starting to think this is a bit too big as they're not sort of going through the first despline object so I'm just going to scale this down a little bit in fact I wish I'm just going to uh, yeah you can just use these edge points to uh, scale it a little bit um, more neatly and with more control so I'm just going to hit simulate again and let's have a look at this so that's starting to look more like what I had in mind but as you can see loads of particles are sort of becoming unstable and shooting off so we can fix this by going into the scene parameters and changing these substeps so I'm just going to change the min substep to 10 and the max substep to 100 and hopefully that should fix some of the instability being caused and it's done the trick I think um, there's some problem at the start and I think that's because the emitters um, too far away from the first despline object so if I just select the emitter I'm just gonna move it in towards the despline um, so it can't miss really and there it goes that's fixed that problem so the simulation starting to take good shape um, so the next thing I'm going to do is keyframe the speed um, parameter of this emitter so on frame 21 I'm going to put the speed to uh, let's say 500 and set a key and I'm going to go to uh, frame 27 and just put the speed to zero so we've got a nice burst of particles and it's not just a constant stream so hitting simulate we can see it's working just as we expected it's actually really smooth maybe a bit too smooth yeah, it's definitely looking a bit too smooth. It's looking a bit like a snake. So I'm going to introduce a little bit more um, of the vortex effect um, into the simulation. So I'm going to go back into the despline and I'm going to up this vortex strength to uh, 0 0.75 and let's see what happens here. Also, I forgot to mention earlier, you can control the um, parameters of each individual despline object um, just here. So if you wanted to make one despline, for example, uh, spin the fluid a different direction, you could do that. So now I'm just going to go to um, real flow and meshes and just drop in a mesh. And you'll see there's quite a few parameters we can tweak here. So the thinning is just going to add a little bit of a filter to the whole mesh and the relax does a similar thing um, makes it look a little bit more organic I like to add a little bit of smooth to the mesh um, maybe uh, one iteration of smoothing and now with that mesh object in place when you hit play it's just gonna mesh it and simulate it at the same time so I think I'm gonna go ahead and cache this simulation so to do that I just go to the scene node and go to cache and click cache simulation and that's just gonna calculate the whole simulation up front so that we can render it and get the same simulation every time so I've just let that run through and if I hit play now you can see the simulation as all cached out and it's all meshed it's not exactly the um, look I was expecting um, also the um, fluid came off track at one point so I actually went into the daemons went into the despline parameters and upped the axial strength to 10 instead of 1 um, just to help it uh, grip onto the path a little bit better so now if you just want to texture this we can drag a texture onto the mesher um, not the one above it it's got to be on the mesher um, and you should be able to get a nice looking render out of this so I'm just going to re-enable the studio and hit render and there it is um, it's looking quite good it's not looking quite as I expected um, it looks a little bit too neat for my liking so if you wanted to make it a little bit um, less neat what we could do is um, go to real flow daemons and add a noise field in and this can basically just um, add a bit of turbulence to the particles so it's just not as neat but what we first need to do is turn off the mesh and go to the cache and remove the cache and that'll take a second um, so if I hit play now you'll see we've got the same simulation but if I go into the noise field and change the effects to velocity and the strength to uh, let's say 20 you'll see we get a much more um, turbulent looking simulation and much more organic looking simulation and I think that would just turn out a whole lot better um, as you can see there's a bit of a problem at the start so I can again move that emitter closer to the first despline object so if I hit simulate now um, that's fixed the problem and um, we're getting a nice turbulent and organic looking fluid simulation so once again this has been the yellow dog 3d tips vlog stay tuned for more 3d tips